Here we go. All right. It's another episode of Two for Chirping with Josh Passolt. Not Passolt. I'm sorry, JD, <laughs> our, our PA announcer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have yeah. you heard it? Uh, I've heard it all my whole career. People uh, mistake Passolt, Passolt. Yeah. So I'm, I'm used to it by now for sure. I'd like to think that I got it one and done. But I don't even know if I asked you when we met or not because mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Like when I look back at that, I mean, you joined the Cyclones – what was it? So you met us in Trois Rivieres. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Montreal. Yep. Did you play that game? Yeah, yeah. I played. Uh, I think we had uh, four games and yeah. five days or whatever it was, and it was. three and three. And what a way to start a pro career! Four yeah. Five. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was uh, thrown into the fire. Tell me from the perspective of a player, because I always use this on the broadcast. Like I, I think every broadcaster is full of either cliches or like generic talk. And we'll always say like, Oh, you know, the third, third game in as many days, like the play isn't going to be as crisp. There's reality to that, right? Like if you can remember, I mean, how do your legs feel when you're in game four in a five day sequence? Yeah, I think, um, it's not easy for sure. Especially playing three, three games in three days. I think if you look at, uh, like playing at teams on back to backs, usually, if if one team hasn't played the night before and the other has, um, usually the team that played the night before is really good out of the gate because yep. they are kind of already in game mode versus the team um, who's just getting going takes them a little bit longer to get into the game, but you'd think that they're a little fresher throughout the three periods. So, I mean, like, I I don't think that it it's, like, sloppy right away. Yeah. It, you know, maybe some games it just is. Um but definitely, as the game goes on, you wear down, and yeah, and it's uh, it's tough for sure. How uh, I don't know if you can get into this, but this is a podcast, and there is no such thing as TMI. So uh, how sloppy did things get after the last game on George Street? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's know, definitely. You, well, did you partake in? I did. Games? I you know we 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 uh, wanted to experience that as a team, and yeah. that was something everybody was talking about. Uh, but it wasn't too crazy, honestly. Yeah. Like, um, Newfoundland is uh, St. John's. You know, that's it's just a different type of s- scenery and I, something I've I've never even been like on the east coast of Boston or oh. Connecticut or anything like that. So it was my first time kind of experiencing East Coast. That's very East Coast. Yeah. So I don't even um, know what that counts as. Yeah, but. Um, no, it was it was a good time, like yeah. uh, nothing too crazy, really. But uh, yeah, it uh, it was an experience for sure. Maybe nothing too crazy for you, depending on the guy <laughs> you ask. You yeah, know. probably. <laughs> like, what was your first interaction with Dejon Mingo? Uh, <laughs> I had, yeah, I've had, uh, or I don't even know if I can get into your foot in that <laughs> in a tough spot here. <laughs> No, he talked about it. Oh, okay. Just, just for the record. So, All right. It, Josh is a great guy, by the way. Let, let's just inter, interject in the middle of this. I I feel bad. I won't go into everything, but I will just say that you know you've you've been good with your time today. We've we've pulled you in a couple <laughs> different directions. Um, but if you don't know this, like Mingo did one of these pods. Yeah. And uh, guy just doesn't pull punches. Like if I asked him again right now, he would come in here and be like, "Oh yeah, I'll tell you what happened." Yeah. You know, because. He was drunk like a skunk in, yeah. in the airport. And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that was uh, something I'd never really seen before. And <laughs> uh, but Mingo, uh, he's a great guy too. And, yeah, he is. And he um, good hockey player. Yeah, really good hockey yes, player. Uh, of course, and and obviously that too. But yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting introduction to professional hockey for yeah. sure. Yeah, seriously, like what a, what an elevator pitch to the league. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's yeah. Uh, you know what though when you talk about Newfoundland, like. I, uh, so I don't know. It's just who I am by, by nature. Like I do not love partaking in as much with the guys. I'll more so do something with like Bez or some of the staffers. I think that's also kind of like the lay of the land in hockey, you know, where like, I don't know that the radio guy should be out partying on George street with 20 of the boys. Um, but like it is it, like, it is a, it's just different, right? Like it's a different, like what you were saying, like, it's just how many roads are you walking on there, like cobblestone as opposed yeah. to like regular road and mm-hmm. like just the the idea of it. It's I almost want to say it's like Hawaii, not in any way like Hawaii, but in the sense that it's like just an island in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, because that's kind of how you like when you look at the U.S. map, like Hawaii is part of the United States, 
but it's out in its own, right. like, it's its own thing. Like, right. Newfoundland is part of Canada, but it's kind of its own thing. And, like, what is it? Newfoundland, St. John's, Labrador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what is Labrador? Is that the county, the province? Like, uh, that word's I have zero idea. The, the, the only thing I really know is, yeah, is that they're, like, an hour and a half ahead of East Coast time, which yeah. is also they're just in their a own time zone. crazy, you know? Thing to think about too yeah it is it is a weird one by the way so you're from wisconsin hayward wisconsin right? yep you ever watch that 70s show i've seen it a few times but i can't say like i'm a diehard fan okay you know but i know that it's based in wisconsin yeah yeah they're, they're bringing it back for that 90s show now are they so yeah i just I, I don't know i thought it would be good for you to to know that in case maybe i'll bored. look into it yeah, yeah you won't <laughs> no i won't <laughs> <laughs> What about uh, okay? So you're not a diehard that '70s show fan. Yep. Are you a diehard like Packers fan? Yes. Diehard. I am. Well, yeah, I'm a diehard, but I also uh, have to turn it off when they're not playing well because I just can't. I don't know. It's it, it, it's weird. Like the Vikings are really good this year, and I have a lot of friends who are Vikings fans, oh, no. and the Packers are having a down year, and so it's like usually I'm always you know, talking smack about how the Packers just run away with the NFC North and yeah. and the fact that, you know, the Vikings have never won a Super Bowl, you know, and they've been around for quite a long time. And and uh, I don't know if a fan base has been um, kicked when they're down more than the Vikings. Like, if, oh. you, if you think about the amount of, like, plays that could have gone, if they went the other way, how different their story might be. Yeah, it's uh, I can think of a few of them off the top of my head. So if there's any Vikings fans watching, you know, like Blair Walsh missing the field goal, <laughs> Anderson missing the field goal, Favre thrown across his body, oh, picked yeah. off in the uh, NFC Championship game. So there's just uh, a lot of things you can think of. That's a really I feel like we could dive into this whole idea of like who is because they, they put polls out about this stuff every year, like the sports fan base that suffers the most like you know me being a philly sports fan i do think there's a lot of suffering there but when you're talking about an individual organization like i, I don't know in my head i always think the cubs like that, that just is always going to jump out to me because mm -hmm. they waited 100 plus years mm -hmm. like i don't know any city that's had that kind of drought but i also don't know like um like this this is a good way to look at it too you're talking about play breakdowns yeah like think of if this play that play this play goes the opposite way of how it did yeah. what could have been. I don't know if like the Cubs are like that, or now I'm going to get into a taboo area, like the Reds, <laughs> like, like the Reds, like you can right now be a Reds fan and be like, man, this is, this is terrible. But at the end of the day, like you're not going into this coming year thinking you're going to win. I think right, it's worse right. than you think you're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the mic open up by the way, Braden Ramsey, our producer who's never on camera. The silent, or not the silent. Hey, I got a face for radio. So. <laughs> a face for radio. Yeah. That's uh, what Passy tells me sometimes. Well, yeah. we, some people say we look alike. Yeah, we do. I actually thought, okay, hold on. No, nope, <laughs> dive into it. I'm this. sitting back. You go for it. No, you go. Oh. You already turned the mic on. We're going to talk about sports, then we're going to talk about this twin thing. Okay. <laughs> Johnny Cueto getting injured in uh, 2012 is the big one for me with yeah. the Reds. Was, we ended up going up 2-0 on the Giants and then lost three straight home games. Yeah. I, I think back to the, the Flyers 2010 uh, Stanley Cup final against the Blackhawks because right before then, Michael Layton was the goaltender. They beat the Canadians in five games in the conference finals. He had three shutouts in five games. Like They just dominated Montreal. Like, they had no chance. And uh, then game one of the Stanley Cup final, Flyers go up 2-0 in like the first six minutes. And I'm like, oh, this is great. This is Layton versus uh, Antony Niemi. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and then Michael Layton lets in a soft goal and that made it two one. And that was the, um, not that one goal, but it was like the, um, like the microcosm for how that series played, because for whatever reason, this guy was unreal throughout the playoffs, got injured, came back after missing like two weeks of the playoffs. It was like round two against Boston, which they came back down three Oh in the series and three Oh in game seven to win. And then Layton was just like great lights out in the conference finals and terrible in the Stanley Cup final. And I still look back and a lot of people <laughs> call the Patrick Kane game six overtime winner as like, yeah. oh, it's iconic. Like, yep. it's a terrible goal in my opinion. Mm. I, I don't know if you know the goal I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I do. Five hole from uh, 
Five like, hole goal line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goal you line. Know? Yeah, he had fakes chemo teaming in on the on the D. He's right on the perimeter. Like in my opinion, as a goalie, like you got to be on the post for that. Like you got to be ready to shut that. You know? Okay. Well, uh, you're a Philly sports fan, and they're pretty tough on their players. They are out they there. Are. So, so maybe that's why I'm doing this. I believe. Yeah, you're just using this as a. A platform to rant about <laughs> Philly sports. I love it. This is um, okay. Well, you. Uh, this is almost. I'm trying to get through this without a cuss word to come out. We'll because see. we'll see. We'll see. Because the Phil Aganov one, I had a lot of swearing. Did you? And we had to bleep out. Yeah. Oh, three um, or four. Yeah. yeah. Right in. The, right off. Well, the it's top. authentic, right? It is. This yeah. isn't scripted. There were a couple, there were this a couple is literally. There's no script. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe there should. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it probably should have. I have, this is the hard part because now I want to jump into all these different ideas. So now I'm going to take a break from sports. I'm going to come back to it, though, because I want to talk to you about being a sports fan then. Okay. Um, but Passold said, like, we're twins in a way. He's got this hat on. Yeah. I, I thought about pulling this joke off, but I can't trust myself when it comes to pulling a joke because I always laugh. Okay. But I was going to tell you, like, because you would have, 100%, I would have gotten you to fall for this. Okay. And I would have been like, hey, like, you know, when you're sitting here, like, just so you know, um, we're going to do, like, a couple of reads <laughs> before, before we start it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you would have been like, okay, yeah, like, yeah, no worries. Yeah. And I would have just started started and being like, you know, today's podcast is brought to you by Male Pattern Baldness. <laughs> if you're struggling like Josh and I. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And I know in the moment you would have been like, oh, I would have, yeah. What is going yeah, on? Yeah, that would have been good. We are, uh, I would have fell for that. For no, sure. we're, we're fighting the puck, okay? That's, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. Um, I, uh, listen, my mom and my girlfriend tell me that my hair is still thick enough that I'm in an okay spot. Yeah. Um, which I like to think that's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, Passy. Oh, the hat's not coming off, so you have to. And I don't put too much on social media where it looks bad. So that's true. Yeah. Did you not like when I was getting some of the candidates of guys walking off the bus? Like when you saw yours? No, I liked it. I liked it. Because you still you still rock great outfits, right? I I like to think so, but you got to distract from what's going on up top. You and I are in the unenviable position of trying to figure that out. Now you've mm-hmm. got a couple more things going for you than me, right? <laughs> you're in better physical shape. You're, you know, you're a pro hockey player, you know, but realistically, if I'm out of, if I'm out at a bar and I am around the guys, I guess in that case, it would help my case. Yeah. Because I would easily just tell somebody that I play for the team. Oh, that yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't look like you don't play hockey. Think, okay, so simulated experience. You and yeah. I are in a bar somewhere, and that conversation comes up, and I'm like, yeah, like him and I are on a line together. Yeah. Are you sewering me, or are we No, going? of course not. Let's go. Yeah, wingman you the whole way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you can talk the talk. You can, right. you know, there's That's nothing right. you wouldn't know about pro hockey that, well, somebody who is Let's be looking to court you might right. also right? know, so... I think yeah, you could fool them for Let, sure. Let's get um, let's get dating advice. And, and I know, and correct me if I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, we're gonna have to cut this because this is gonna be really awkward. <laughs> you do have a relatively long term girlfriend, yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. she and I was gonna say because you're, I, I feel like I don't see you out much. Okay. Because I think you're one of the good guys. You're back home FaceTiming and stuff. <laughs> like you're you're one of the charms out there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So she's got it good. She's got a great guy. But, <laughs> But uh, there you go. <laughs> um, but like, tell me, and I'm sure she'll chime in. Cause will she watch this? Is she the kind of? Yeah, I'm sure she will. Better. Okay. Her, her parents are big fans too. Let's go. Just give yeah. the whole shout outs right now, because we. Yeah. Know, the only one I'm thinking of in my head is John, because yep. it was perfect timing for this yeah. call out when you told me. But yeah. just rattle them all off. Uh, okay, shout out uh, John, Rhonda, Kelsey. That's my sister. Okay. Um, Lauren, Jen, Mark, and maybe even Matthew. Her brother is kind of getting into hockey, maybe a little bit too. Wait, who's the girlfriend? Lauren. Okay. Yeah. So Lauren may have an opinion of this, but I'll ask you, 
to try and help me out and we'll, we'll help each other. I'm in a long-term relationship as well, but no. still, oh, I, okay. need <laughs> I, I, I need to know. I need to know. I need to know for impressing her. Okay. Contingencies. What? Contingencies, yeah. <laughs> She's going to say this. I'm, I'm sure this is their favorite segment possible. This is coming out the week of Christmas, too, so this is not good for me. Okay. I'm in the doghouse. Oh, um, boy. No, it's a, she knows I'm joking, I think. But I am. Um, so we, we're dealing with what we're dealing with up here. Yep. If you're a guy who's who's trying, like at one point you, you met your girlfriend, so at one point you met Lauren, at one point I met Kayla. Yep. This was already a thing. Mm. What's the next best thing you can do? Like, what's the, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, what are you leading with? Well, I did not have this whole situation going on when I met her. I had much better hair. How than, long ago? That was four years ago. Okay. So, um, but I do have like a huge nose that <laughs> it's also very noticeable. So I don't know, you know, the story of us meeting, like, it wasn't like, hey, I went up to her and like. I was spitting some game. She came and found me. Yeah, and she mm. and she'll tell you this because that actually did happen. And uh, I was a little bit surprised that uh, she was coming up to me, and I was like, "This is an opportunity that I can't let go." By the wayside, <laughs> like this doesn't happen all the time. This is so, a breakaway. Yeah, this is a B way. I gotta make sure I bear down on this. This is great. So how did how did she come up to you? Like she knew you were with the hockey team and she was like, wow. It's Josh Passel. <laughs> no. Guy. No, actually she didn't know like anything about hockey. Oh, okay. Um so long story short, I went to Western Michigan. She went to Michigan State, but she grew up in a town right next to where Western Michigan is, Kalamazoo. So um, right next to Kalamazoo, she grew up, and she had friends who did go to Western, and it just so happened that her best friend was dating a player on our team. Yeah. And so at a birthday party for the girl who was dating a player on my team, that's where we met. Wow. And, it, and I was dressed in, like, a Halloween costume. <laughs> it was more of a birthday party, but, like, all of us hockey guys showed up in, in Halloween costumes. So What a story. Yeah. And – what four years later? Yeah, here we are. Look at us, man. Look at us. Look at us here. Look at us. I got you beat, man. <laughs> yeah, five and a half. Five and a half. I know, right? Go. Seriously. So when are you buying the ring? Half a dex. You know, when is he buying the ring? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> really put you on the spot, eh? <laughs> it's such a tough spot. Well, it's it, we've talked about this. It's just, dude. I and and she's one of those people that will be like, oh, you don't need to get me anything expensive. And I gen, I, I think it's authentic. Like I don't think she's lying about that. You know, but. Come on, man. Like, there's a ten, like, what does that mean? Yep. You don't go out and buy a hundred dollar promise ring and say, right. like, but it's an engagement ring. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. there's a look, you know? Yep. So, so you got to be ready for it. Um, and the other good thing about us, and I, I don't know where you're at with this, but like, that next step is that slash kids. And I, and I don't know which one's going to come before the other. Wow. But like, it's about living life right now. Okay. Like, so, you know, traveling, trips, trying to think of what to do next. Where haven't you seen, you know, I'm a big Phillies fan. Like, what ballparks haven't I been to? <laughs> oh like, funny, I have to hit the bucket. Yeah, you know, why what not? I do, man. I'm why an, not? I'm an individual, too. Yep. You know, you, I got feelings. You have your wants and needs. Right, yeah. exactly. I love that song by Drake. But, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about or do you not listen to rap? Uh, I do, but I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll laugh like okay, I do. Yeah, yeah, pretend. Good right. job, man. You're ready for this. No wonder <laughs> yeah. you're on an A deal. Yeah. What, tell, tell me about that, though. So she's from, um, and, I, and again, I don't know if you want to go into this or not. This is really putting you on the spot, but you just did it to me. So, like, you got an AHL deal from Rochester. Yeah. Um, your girlfriend's from Kalamazoo. You're from Michigan. Yep. They've been affiliated with Cleveland and Columbus for a while now. When everything was going down and you were going to sign a pro contract, like, Yep. Were there any other suitors, or was Roch the only one that really reached out? Uh, yeah, it was it was a unique thing. Um, I think um, for any college free agent, like once your season ends, which like mine did in the NCAA tournament, it's kind of like okay, now what? Now what? Sure. What's going on? And all leading up to that, you're kind of seeing um, guys signing who's maybe didn't make the NCAA tournament or got bounced um in the conference tournaments and stuff like that and they're signing and you're kind of like saying comparing yourself to other players saying well they got this so maybe i might get this and then um yeah so it was like uh a, a weird time um where for like a week i was just kind of sitting around waiting to hear what what 
might happen and like uh, not really making any sort of plans because you didn't want to <clears throat> commit yourself one way and then be told, okay, you got to show up here. Like, yep. um, and so, yeah, it was just like, I think our season ended on like a Saturday and for like three days, I just kind of sat and, uh, waited and waited for the phone to, uh, to ring and stuff like that. And was talking back and forth with my agent about where I might go, you know, who's saying what, yada, yada, yada. And then at, after a certain point, like it didn't, you know, nothing had really come to fruition. And so then you're just kind of like, oh man, then you're playing the, the game in your head, like other guys are signing, like, oh, yeah. like I kind of heard this team was interested. They just signed this guy. You know, what does that mean for me? So it, it was uh, it was a weird time, and I just tried to remain patient. And then I remember, like, one day I was just like, okay, I got to go, like, skate or something, get get my mind off this, because I was literally, like, just going insane in my apartment at yeah. uh, school, just looking on online, like, refreshing AHL transactions. <laughs> And like blowing up my agent's phone, like, yeah. and um, so I went and skated, and then after like an hour, I got off the ice, and like I had like a couple of missed calls from my agent, I called him back, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, Rochester wants to do this, and they want you to finish the year with Cincinnati and have you know a contract for next year." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I mean that, that sounds great." Like I had some familiarity yeah. with the organization being a development camp before, and so. That was just kind of it. I, I, um, I didn't really wait around to to hear what else might happen because right. it was a good fit and um, uh, something I was comfortable with doing. And so that all happened, and I, <laughs> so that I got that call at like four o'clock, and by like eleven o'clock, I was in Detroit because I had to fly out the next day. It was yeah. it was a hectic hectic time talking to Painter and all the other uh, people with Rochester and Jason Carmanos and all these, uh, you know, welcome to the organization. Here, here's yeah. your flight. This is where you need to be, yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it felt like a long time of waiting and then just everything hit all yeah. at once. I feel like that's so, so what you describe is not, it's not um, identical, but similar to, I feel like, like a broadcaster, like trying to apply for these jobs because you see like so many people are going after it, just like players. Like everybody wants to be involved in sports for, for a living. Like if you can make a career in something that you're either playing growing up. I mean, in my case, I, I played and then I was like, well, I'm not good enough to play pro. Like what can I do to get paid in this game? And then mm. like this came, but like, it's so like every day I'm like, okay, am I going to hear anything? Am I going to hear anything? I'm refreshing my emails. I'll wake up in the morning. It's the worst because you get all the spam mail overnight. So you're like, yeah. oh, I got 3,500 emails. There's got to be one. <laughs> and you're like, oh, none are there. And then like you're looking online, you're waiting for a team to announce something. And then all of a sudden, if you do get the call, you know, Cincinnati was different for me because they they were really gracious with their time and they gave me, um, it was a really long process, but it was because of the pandemic. And then when I got the job, I think I ended up, getting like, I want to say like six weeks until I had to move. So it was really nice. But like the move before that, like the league I worked in before, I, yeah. did, I was given 10 days really? like, that yeah. I had to be in the office. Like, right. It's 12 hours away from home. So yeah. yours is even worse than that because it's day of. So right. I mean, like, what are you like, what, take me through this part. And I'm kind of, I guess, asking you to humble yourself, but like be realistic. Like when you're refreshing those transactions, like, I know that feeling of refreshing an inbox. Like, there's got to be some like self-esteem issues that are going on too, right? Like, am I not yeah. good enough? Like, what's right. going on? Yeah, you kind of get stuck in that, um, you know, with your own thoughts, and uh, it's it's also a little different because at the same time, like I had teammates who were signing NHL deals and uh, and other AHL deals and stuff like that, and you're very excited for them, you're very happy for them, yeah. and you're like, man, I just you know. I can't wait for when I when I can say that yeah. too. You know, of course you're excited for your teammates and you want them to succeed as well. But at the same time, you're just like, wow, I got to be getting mine here yeah. pretty soon. And then, you know, so so uh, yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting interesting feeling for sure. Yeah, because like you said, and and again, same for us. Like we'll see a guy go up. Like you know, in the summer, you might see you know in in our it's kind of like a broadcast fraternity, um, at least in the ECHL where. 
I think everybody's really close and they pull for one another. But like, and this is just, I think it's the reality of business, which we often forget. Yes, we love working in sports. This is a business. It's a business for you too. It's a business for your agent. It's a business mm-hmm. for the coaches. It's a business for me. You're really happy for somebody, but there is a party that's like, like in our case, if we see a guy move up to the AHL, we're like, let's go, man. Like, you know, like, yeah. kill it up there. I know, I know you do, you deserve it. Right. Yeah. But like, what if that was a job you were going for? Mm. Like, mm-hmm. It's like, I'm happy for you. I genuinely yeah. am happy for you. I'm just like, okay, but now when's the next time another opportunity is going to open up? Sure. Sure. Right. And I, uh, you know, I think there, there's a lot to be said about that. And that's something that I've learned quickly. Um, is, uh, you know, those types of things happen and maybe your number doesn't get called and somebody close to you does yeah. and you're happy for them. But uh, I, I don't think, I think it almost does more more harm than good to be like, okay, when am I going to get my shot? Yep. Instead of just kind of focusing on the day-by-day things that you can do Living to improve yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so that's something that I'm trying to do a lot now and I, I took that into training camp this year. And, and prospects camp and all that stuff. And I felt like I had a lot of success when I was just kind of like taking it day by day, survive today or, or get better today and, and worry about once you stack those days on top of each other, that's going to, you know, that's going to turn into something good. And that's really all you can do is, is control, you know, how you perform and, and how you are getting better. Well, I, this podcast it doesn't often honestly i feel like we barely ever focus on hockey like which we show <laughs> I, I don't i don't know whatever we have fun with it it's fun. yeah no um but like i said i mean it's it's kind of a, like a no holds barred podcast so but let me ask you this um because i don't think it's come up in our radio interviews or anything that, that we've done together um you know at the time of this recording it's a little before the holidays i think you've had a good season that, that's how i would feel about it i don't know how you feel about yours um but when we talk about this stuff in day to day, kind of put you on the spot here. How are your emotions uh, about the situation you're in? Because I've seen it both ways, and I've seen guys who, and I don't even mean at this level, like this level, yes. But I worked in the SPHL, and there were guys who got sent down from ECHL camps, but they 100% felt like they were above the SPHL. Mm. Like they got there with the mindset of like, well, I'm going to be here for a week. But like they, they, the coach just told me like, you know, he, he said, I'll see you soon. Mm. You know, yeah. go back to it being a business, right? Like right. at the end of the day, you know, some people say things, whether they're true or not, or whether, you know, how you interpret something, you know, somebody could say, hey, you're this close. This close to someone could mean I'm two months away. This <laughs> close to someone else could mean I'm five years away. Yeah. How do you handle the emotions of being in the ECHL while on an AHL contract? Because I do think there are guys, like, my opinion outwardly is I don't think it faces you at all. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, does it? Well, yeah. I mean, like, I I don't know that it phases me, right? Like, I don't don't think I allow it to get me down or anything like that. Like, um, I have... I'm a pretty positive person, I would say, and I have a positive outlook on most things, and I don't see any reason to not be positive, yeah. you know, like, I get to play hockey for a living, and, you know, I'm grateful for that, and um, so, yeah, I mean, like, this is my first year, I'm learning things every week, every day about the business, the game, the pro schedule, you know, you go from college, you play a maximum of like 36, maybe 40 games a year. And uh, pro, you're playing 72 games, three and threes, four and four fives, and you know, like these different things. And um, so, yeah, I mean, like my experience so far has, has been positive is, is what I would say. As far as my play, I think I can always be better. Like I'm always striving to be better. Um, so like going from prospects camp to training camp with uh, Buffalo, then to training camp with Rochester, and then to training camp with Cincinnati, it's, some might see that as doing like a a downward fall. And I I don't see it like that. And especially with the conversations I've had with people involved with the organization and, and how important it is for a young player to play games and to uh, get adjusted to the pro game and, and and whatnot. And I, I can't look at 
you know, someone else and say, well, look at the situation there. And I'd yeah. love to be in that situation because I don't know that I would. Like, I, I'm perfectly sure. like all I can do is control what I do. You know, I can only control the effort I give and the and how I'm getting better. I can't worry about look at depth charts or anything like that and say, well, you know, I could be there or this or that. Um because I don't think that it does you any good. You know, I hope that I work and get my opportunity. And then when that opportunity comes, you, you got to make the most of it. But that's just like professional sports, right? Yeah. Like, like everybody's opportunity is a little different. And if you don't get a huge opportunity, you got to make the most of it. And the guys that do are the guys that stay. You know, and so I'm not sitting here acting like I got it all figured out, right? <laughs> I'm a couple months into my first pro season, but I think there are ups and downs. And to be able to kind of stay level headed and have a day by day mentality, like, I think that really helps. Because if you try to pro project too far forward, I think, you know, you get, you lose um, the daily habits and, <clears throat> things you need to do to keep improving. Well, I think what you're saying, it, and you mentioned you said it's hockey, right? We often, in these conversations, it gets very philosophical because is it hockey or is it just life? <laughs> because, like, how many people would be sitting at, like, you know, whatever job, and it's, you know, a corporate company, and it's like, well, I want to climb up the ladder, but, like, oh, I should have already been here by now, and it's, well, at the end of the day, it's your work ethic. Like, and I think what does danger people is when they get in that muddy water in any walk of life and start thinking they're owed something or thinking, you know, I should be somewhere. Why am I not there yet? Because then it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to sit on my chair because I already know I should be there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's BS that I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And the guys that are like that stay in the chair they're complaining about being right. in forever. Yep. 100%. Right? 100%. Yeah, and I think it's cool. Like, one thing that's unique about this league and, and this level is that, like, everyone's trying to get up to the next level. Seriously. You know, like coaches, players, equipment staff, yourself, broadcasters. Everybody wants to get up to that next level. And that's not to say that they don't enjoy their time here, you know. Yeah. Like, this is a great spot and a great organization, but everybody's striving to get there. And yeah. so... It's pretty cool in that way, too. I think, well, <clears throat> you know what? Um, last year, this would have been before you came here. Um, at least I think. I'm going to go with yes. Um, we had the Kelly Cup here. It was, uh, God, I wish I could think. I, we had Fan Appreciation Day as our last game of the season. Yep. I want to say the <laughs> Cup was not there for that. I want to say it was there, like, in maybe February. So definitely before you, because you came in in April. Um I went up, looked at it, you know, um, and, and like I've been able to see the Stanley Cup up close a few times, and that's like a moment that you remember. But the thing about the Kelly Cup that stuck out to me is it's similar to the Stanley Cup. Not the look, but the names. Like the names are all on it, like the guys yeah. that are winning. So it's like <clears throat> I, I look at it from that angle, and when you say, like to your point, we're all trying, but we're also all pulling on the same rope here. Because we believe that team success is potentially the best way to get to that level. Mm. And look, man, at the end of it all, the the crazy thing about life, it's the most beautiful thing and the most frustrating thing is there's no blueprint, there's no roadmap, and you don't know where you are and how long you're going to be where you are. Like, for all I know, this is my ceiling. Like, mm -hmm. in the play-by-play -play hockey broadcasting industry, this could be my ceiling. I may never get higher than the ECHL. But what would be cool is if one day I can look at a championship ring or I can look at that trophy and, you know, let's say it's this year and let's say I leave hockey and 15 years down the road, you know, I've got a kid and, you know, we live in an ECHL market and the Kelly Cup's going to be there. I can go and point to where my name is because yeah. I'm part yeah. of the staff that's on that cup. Like that to me is something. There's that idea. We'll go back to sports here because – um. I, I watched this documentary on the Broad Street Bully, Broad Street Bullies. <laughs> Tongue tied, I'm a broadcaster. Not good. But uh, I've watched a documentary on the Broad Street Bullies of, of the 70s with the Flyers. And uh, Fred Shiro, who's their head coach, ahead of the uh, first cup that they win in 74, when they have a chance to win it in game six, they have a 3-2 series lead. And he wrote on the chalkboard, um, win today and we walk together forever. Yeah, And, like, that is something that, yeah. you know – if, if it ever happened, 
Who knows how many years are going to go by, right. but like we will always have that connection no matter what everybody does. Yeah. That's something that sticks yeah. out to me. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's obviously pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm bringing up a Philly sports thing. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> um, no, like, let's talk about suffering franchises. You were talking about the Vikings. Like, yeah. when you were a kid growing up, I imagine, like, I feel like when we're all adults, it's harder to maybe be as invested because we're yeah. working on our own lives. But, like, what's a moment that sticks out to you as, like, do, do you have any of those, like, heartbreaking stories as a kid, like, watching your team? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I always get a hard time about this because I am a Packers fan. I, I really do like the Packers. My parents are both Vikings fans. Okay. And then but I do like the twins. So that's yeah. like they're like, why aren't you a Brewers fan? Weird. You know? And I'm and I guess you could call me a, a when I was growing up a Minnesota Wild fan, but they were never really contending when I was into hockey. Like I think they made it to the conference finals in like two thousand three or something like that. But I was wasn't really a part of that and then um, so like the twins have been, had some real tough po postseason, uh, yeah. success or lack of, um, ever since I've been into sports and then like the, but the Packers, I mean, they, they won the Super Bowl yep. in, uh, 2000, 2009. No, I don't think it's 09. Oh, God. My girlfriend, uh, her family, Packers fans. Yeah. Maybe, That's the game. maybe I'm just like, uh. Not really a Packers fan. I think but, you're going to uh, piss her off. Well, the fact <laughs> that I'm just butchering, like, <laughs> when they won the championship. Yeah, it might have been 2011. You know, no, it was 20. Well, it's either 10 or 11. Oh, what is survey it? Survey says 2011. Ah! Yeah, that's what I was going to say. No. Oh. <laughs> but um, that's good job, Monster. Brady but, knows he was a fan of the Packers that year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Then I think you said Anybody the Steelers in 2010, and then you've no. been like – He's been in a tug of war in his life between like the Calves and Golden yeah, this State. Year, yeah, yeah, the Eagles are you know, really my squad. You know, there the you go. Right now. Mossy, you know. Yeah, fly you know. Eagles fly. There really. you go. But um, so like when games were on before, I was a huge fan. It was always the Vikings, okay. um, because I was battling my parents for that. So like more so, their heartbreaks stand out. Like the Brett Favre interception in the NFC Championship game. Uh, is one, and then the Blair Walsh like miss field goal. I'm just kind of using this as a platform to just push Roast. down the Vikings yeah, <laughs> seriously. fan base even more. Not not that I like despise them or which anything. In, which like includes that. your parents. This yeah, I know. Is, you're sabotaging John. I know, <laughs> John and Rhonda. But um, no, I can't think of any like heartbreak moments. Okay. Like I grew up in like the YouTube era where it was, like, highlights of Ovechkin and Crosby and stuff like that. And so I was more, like, fans of, of players. Wait, you're hold on. You're 26, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm 27. So yeah. we grew up in the same era. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, year, exactly. Well, you know, yeah. You, you were in the MySpace. When I was you know? a kid, you know. <laughs> Back in my day, you know. <laughs> but I don't know if you were a big YouTube guy, but, like, I was always oh, on YouTube, like, watching highlights of Ovechkin or Crosby yeah. or Patrick Kane or stuff like that. And, like – more so a fan of just the game than any team in particular, especially being in Wisconsin, not having a professional hockey team. I think that's why you had that experience. Yeah. Uh, but I know that that's a thing. People talk about that now. I mean, I grew up in the YouTube era. Like for me, I remember 2007. That for some reason in my head is the year, and maybe I'm off, but like, um, like YouTube, like kind of blew up and like that was when you know me and the friends would be like rounding the desktop computer and like watch some funny <laughs> videos on youtube that everyone yeah. laughed at like uh yeah i don't know i'm trying like to think. heckling philly sports May no i don't players even, like i don't even know if it was that like you, okay think about this because philly's pretty hard on their their teams you right you said this man now, yeah so i know but like i this. just think of i see you like yelling out your window like yeah, you saw me do that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah like that happened. Philly, Philly sports. It's hard. It is hard. I'll, I'll I'll bring up my my girlfriend one more time here. I just 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 because it's supposed to be about you, man. But like, okay, sorry. but that's <laughs> no, all right. You know. But uh, she does, and she especially the Philly is so like that's really been my team now for the last few years. For the longest time, it was the Flyers, and then to be honest, like just working in hockey, I just am not as into watching it yeah. as much because I think you need time away from the game. Sure. Um, so like now baseball has been my thing and minus this past year, it's been tough, dude. Like 
September collapse after September collapse. And like, she would see me get very, very angry, like start throwing stuff and like get yep. out of control, yep. you know, um, at games and you're saying stuff you, you know, yep. shouldn't say. And right. she's like, dude, like there's other people that can hear you talk <laughs> right now. Like, and I'd be like, I don't, I can't even, cause I like want to snap into that right this moment. I can't. Yeah. I'm trying to make this as easy of an edit job for Braden as possible. <laughs> um, but man, it it's hard. I, you know, I've heard I've heard two things. I've heard one from the outside fan that Philly is really tough on their players. But the other side of it is like at the end of the day, like you just want performance. And how could I not be tough on a player who is signed to be something that they haven't been living up to? Mm. That's fair, right? Yeah. Like if you like think of. Think of when the Minnesota Wild got Parise and Suter. Yeah. And what the expectations were for getting those guys at the time they did versus what they ultimately were. I mean, Suter's been really good or was really good for them for the longest time. But, like, Parise always dealt with injuries. Yep. Parise, for the most part, was never the guy he was with in New Jersey. If you sign him to, like, a max deal, which in the NHL at that time, I think he was getting seven, eight, nine million a year. Mm. Chuck Fletcher was the GM at the time. I only know it because he's in Philly now. Yeah, yeah. How are you not mad? Right. Like, you know? Yeah, it, it's interesting. Like, I think that I'm giving you a hard time that they're hard on their players, but they're just very passionate fans, right? right? Like, fans are going to have opinions like that. And, and, thing, and uh, you know, Minnesota Wild fans, like, uh, there were a lot of people who were upset when they were uh, bought out, you know, yep. that I saw yep. and stuff like that. Obviously, I think those two guys wanted – the team to have success, yeah. you know, more than anybody. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, they decided to go in a different direction. I and uh, you know, my mom I know is a huge Parisi and Suter fan, yeah. so she was pretty uh, distraught about the whole uh, buyout situation. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think you go through that even if a player is like bad at the end. Like it, it's still sad when you see a guy leave because if they're known as like part of the franchise's identity, yeah, you know. But but again, I mean, this I don't want to I don't want to keep dragging this in the mud. But like you referenced the Brewers earlier, like if you're a Brewers fan and you signed Christian Yelich to that mammoth contract, Yelich over the last couple of years is like just he's not that player. I don't know if he ever will be again, but like. If he's not, you're signing him. If you're signing a guy for twenty five million and he's playing at the level of a twelve million dollar player, that is frustrating hmm. as a fan. Yeah, I think the knee injuries are really what did Yelich in. He like broke his kneecap. It would have been back to back MVP years probably if he didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and that and that happens. I'm worried about that with the Phillies for Bryce Harper. I'm done talking about the Phillies now. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble talking about this. Yeah, but um, what uh. You're so I I did want to bring up your your dad John and I and I'm sorry is it is it Rana Rhonda 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 Wow Ron <laughs> no, I call her Ron for short <laughs> I'm sorry Rhonda I do not mean it like that you know yeah. there's a character named Rhonda in that '70s show Well there you go There we go The you know? the parallels continue to show themselves <laughs> Don't don't say that <laughs> Don't say that Just look up Rhonda from that '70s okay. show Okay That's not right Okay I'm sorry. John and Rhonda. Are you Uh-oh. suing me here? <laughs> what is going on? Okay, yes, John and Rhonda. <laughs> they, they call her Big Rhonda in the show. <laughs> oh, well, not, yeah. It's not meant to be No, that she, Rhonda is. <laughs> I'm sure she's yeah. a sweetheart. Yes, she is. Oh, there you go. Is that Rhonda? <laughs> she actually has somewhat of a similar haircut to that. <laughs> Or oh did at God. one point. Uh, not, not quite that severe. That's She's... the most Velma-looking character I've ever seen. <laughs> it is. Does your mom look like Velma? No, nah, I wouldn't say so. Okay. So I'm sorry, Rhonda, by the way. <laughs> we we love your son. So, um, And we owe you a shout-out now. Yes. Because John got what, it's such a good timed thing. Like, Because if that yeah. goal would have came with like 13 minutes to go in the third, like I don't know, so much would have happened between there yep. and then. But you told me before the game, you're like, hey, my dad's going to be listening you could give a shout out to John if I like do something. Yeah. And you scored less than two minutes in. Might have to make it a thing now. Did you at least like have any conversation with him afterward and be like, hey, did you hear the shout out? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And uh, he was excited. But at the same time, Rhonda was also listening from Hayward and she's like, ah, where's my shout out? I was like, well, mom, yeah. like dad's in Arizona. Like, no, Rhonda you know? is on But deck. she's, she's going to get one here this week, I think. Maybe. Oh, or this week? Whenever this 
this well, podcast is dropping. There's a, there's Hopefully a lot of before games. this drops. Okay, this is going to be good. Yeah, because then afterward we'll be like, look at the foresight we have. Yeah, exactly. So tell me, um, so that way we know, and I can yep. practice this ahead yep. of the weekend, if we give her the shout out, like... Yep. What do you say? Because you're you're pretty you're a pretty smart guy, man. Like mm. when we went to Kalamazoo, yeah, I didn't use it, but you're like the prodigal son returns. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm that was a blast. joke. I'm not the prodigal son of <laughs> Kalamazoo. Uh, Great Lake Superman is back. Yeah, here at something Wings like Event that. Uh, yeah, Come I don't on. know. Uh, I'll have to think about it for a bit. I I, I might be smarter when I have a chance to kind of. Think, process yeah. it and, and everything like that. I don't know that I brought that up on the spot. Well, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you on the spot because we put people on the podcast just so everybody knows. We put people on who we believe are very good talkers. Mm. We have a lot of great people in our dressing room. Guys, I love talking with. Yeah. But I know if I put a mic in front of some of them, yeah. they're just like, sure. you know. So what, like, and I apologize for not knowing this offhand, but like we said, we're, we're rolling off the cuff here. Yeah. What degree did you get from from Western Mesh? Uh, like what's I, your major? <laughs> I got a finance major. Okay. Uh, with an economics minor, a general business studies minor, and a leadership and business minor. I got three minors. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Whoa, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're so pretty, smart, pretty educated, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah. No, but you are like you. You have a great cadence too. Your delivery is so so punctual. Well, you know. yeah, and I'll give you something here, uh, here um, we go. because here we go. Uh, you don't know this, and not many other people notice know this. Um, I wouldn't say it's because I'm like a communications major or anything like that, but there's a couple factors that kind of go into maybe my ability to be on camera, comfortable around group settings and stuff. And, and this is something that you don't know, and you probably would never know because there's not much record of it, but. In Hayward, Wisconsin, small town of 2,300 people, every year, the end of July, last weekend in July, they hold what is called the Lumberjack World Championships. So there is a big bowl of seating in this, um, you wouldn't call it like a, maybe a, a bay. Okay. And it's a small little uh, body of water, and they compete in modern day timber sports. Which okay. and it's like it's recorded on ESPN and shown in like February or March on like ESPN two, and it's um so throughout the summers in Hayward when they're not using it for that which is just one weekend they have lumberjack shows and it's kind of like this scripted um, event. Uh, where you have like two guys, professional lumberjacks, and an announcer. Mm -hmm. And so my mom had a job working for the guy who kind of owns the lumberjack show and does some other things in real estate and stuff like that. And so one summer, like the job was open to be the announcer. And um, it, it was pretty good hours. Like you show up at one o'clock for a 2 30 show, and you're there till like four or five. And you know, the, the pay was pretty decent for a, a wow. high school kid. So I would do these lumberjack shows where you're announcing. It's kind of based off a script, but there is some uh, some freedom to it. Yeah. And uh, so I had to get out there, hold a mic, and talk to crowds of 200 to 500 people five times a week all throughout the summer, and I did that for four years. Unbelievable. <laughs> so you're a yeah. play-by-play guy. Kinda. Well, sort of, yeah. Kinda. And it's like, you, you know, there were um, jokes involved with it. It's a, it's a tourist show. Yeah. But, yeah, you could look it up. It's Fred Shear's Lumberjack Shows is what it was. And and uh, I was the announcer, and I wore, wore a little bit of a get-up. And then on top of that. Is there a video component to this? That you could find videos on YouTube of it, but I don't think that uh, – I don't think that you'd see me doing my thing. I, this is unreal. I'm wasting no time. You're already on it. Yeah. Okay, so we just had a, a rough cut due to some technical issues, but we spent that time digging up a picture, which if you're watching the podcast on YouTube, you're going to be able to see, but if not, you just get to hear it. We did find a picture of Josh Passel um, emceeing uh, Fred Shears Lumberjack Show, which I now feel like I owe myself a trip up to Michigan for. 
Well, it's in Wisconsin, but yeah, you can check it out there too. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> there you go. But Hayward, Wisconsin, if you ever find yourself there, you can there. check it out there too. <laughs> Send me here for French Year's Lumberjack uh, Show. Yeah. What are you doing? Wrong state. There you go. Oh but yeah, that, so that's. A little bit why I think I'm comfortable around a microphone camera. Yeah, you're whatever. doing great, man. You're Thanks. knocking this one out the park. Well, except for the Packer yeah. misinformation. I And maybe that has to do with, you know, if we sit down and go over this ahead of time, maybe yeah. this would have been way better. Because I would have known, like you would have told me, you would have been like, hey, Mosser, like, to be honest, I'm a fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the fact that the Packers just haven't had many down years since I've no. been alive, you know. No, that, but this, that is, also, one this, this is, is one of them. This is undeniably. So yeah. it's tough. It's tough to see where things go from here, but. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting to the end of this anyway. So what's, uh, let me ask you this. Um, now that I know, and <laughs> this lumberjack shows in Michigan, <laughs> um, there you in, go. In, in Hayward, Wisconsin, yeah. uh, what are the, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds that you would do it again? Uh, I would go back and do another show. I did it for a little bit. Like I'd say two summers, I filled in like one show yeah. because I needed somebody or something like that. Uh, um, but the, the script, I think I got it pretty much to memory. I might need a little bit of touching up on on uh, all the lines, but yeah, I think I think I could do it. But you're saying the that, fact like that you... the, if the Cyclones front office or you yourself come and wants to record one, we could find a way to do it. What if there probably. was a, okay? So I don't know what your opinion is of uh, is of me as a broadcaster, but imagine <laughs> there I am in Hayward, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, nice, My nice. Opinion? No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Super Sally, but uh, like, what would happen if I'd show up and I'd be like, "Hey, Passy, what if you and I like did this together?" Yeah, could you imagine that? Would I, you do it? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we we could definitely uh, get in there and and uh, get after it. I I think you could do it yourself. Like, I know, but it like, might I be need, good to like I need diversify your portfolio a little bit. Look at these big words. Yeah, well, diversify like three and minors and a major. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, so. Um, but do you think it's a good idea if we came up with our own lumberjack show here as a content piece for the Cyclones? <laughs> I think that you're you got a good idea there, and maybe uh, maybe we should run with that a do little bit. Do you have some spare like red and black flannels and suspenders hanging around in do your I? suitcase at the apartment? Do I? Do I? Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to go at any time. No, but uh, yeah, I mean. We could get something going for sure. There's a, there's a variety of timber sports, and yeah. it is a real thing. There are professionals. Some of my friends compete professionally around the United States and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty cool. They even have it's even a collegiate sport now, dude. Where people compete for national championships on the crosscut saw, and uh, the the one man bucking saw. Bro, we got to get this going. Springboard chop. Excellent. Boom yeah, run. Yeah, he knows them all. He knows them all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I, before we let you go, you said that you had the script memorized. Yep. Is there anything that you could kind of recant? And what voice do you use? All right. Well, so. This the, is our last the piece. Big, the big saying, like the, the, uh, the kind of war call, you could say, of Lumberjacks is – Yoho, Y O H O. Okay. And so that's that's when you come out onto the stage when you, for when you do this. Yeah, because <clears> I am. The big thing is you got to get everybody to Yoho, and that's kind of like that's like hello, good night, good morning, uh, way to go. Is this the John that Walton was taps over time call. Against the Penguins. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Pittsburgh. Dropping some broadcaster knowledge on us here. Eh? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the big thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there, you could, uh, I could probably go off the script a little bit. Come on, man. Hit me with one line. <clears throat> Just throw it in there. Okay. So you come out, like you fired up, you go, yo, ho. <laughs> that's how you kind of get them in. And they, they say, yo, back to you. And you're like, no, nah, that wasn't good. You get them to do it again. You go, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fred Shears Lumberjack Shows. My name is Josh Passeltz. I'll be your announcer for today's competition. Today, we've got four professional lumberjacks <laughs> that are going to come out here and compete in modern day as well as old time timber sports. But before we do that, let's go over a little history of how these sports came to be, and then you kind of run them through the the I history and stuff like that. So I love you it. can tell it's 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 right here. I would say you have a future in broadcasting, but you've been broadcasting. So <laughs> there you go. There it is. <laughs> All right, let, let's end it. This has been a long time. Josh, thanks for your time, man. Yeah. Love talking to you. That's another episode of Two for Chirping. We'll be back uh, in the new year. So Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year.